What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's going to be 2021's The Suicide Squad. So overall I thought that the movie was generally fun, it was good, and it was basically just a good time, but in general I couldn't find a reason for why it was made, especially since it wasn't really set up as a sequel to The Last Suicide Squad with uh, Will Smith. The only real connecting factor was Amanda Waller and Harley Quinn, but I couldn't quite make out if this was supposed to be a film where The Suicide Squad is just a list of expendable um, villains that the government wants to send into harm's way where mercenaries or their own troops can't do it or won't do it or the mission is not worth expending on the record American assets I guess so for me it so while I enjoyed watching it it didn't really feel like a film that fit into anything um, from what I heard online it feels like it was more of a continuation of what we see saw in um, Birds of Prey and the, and the Emancipation of Harley Quinn, but I actually haven't seen that film either, so I'm not quite sure what the purpose of this film was, and that's kind of along one of the reasons why it's hard to recommend watching this film, just because if I can't tell a purpose of a film, then it's one of those things where it makes me question why it was made, so even if it was supposed to be a sequel, well, it didn't really feel like a sequel or it wasn't presented well, um, unless ultimately that's kind of where they're going to go with maybe, say, the Batman film, or the next Batman film, or the Flash, or the um, next phase of the DC universe. But the way they're going, it feels like where Marvel is setting themselves up, or set themselves up with the whole overarching MCU, and very few of the char or the basically the character stories are built into the films, but they don't have, you know, individual. I mean, they do have individual character films like the Iron Man film and Captain America, but they're not really breaking down the Avengers by a rotating cast of characters. They have overarching Avengers, and then because of the events of what happened with the Infinity War and Thanos, they're going to now have the next generation. So it all makes sense, so it actually all works together, whereas here it feels like DC is coming from the reverse direction, and um, instead of you know you having an organization like S.H.I.E.L.D. thinking that they need to have that team of heroes handy, here we have the government in, and Amanda Waller saying, no, we don't need the... An Avengers or Justice League kind of team. We have the resources available so we can use the resources we don't need until they're used up and then if we still need a perpetual ongoing team of superheroes then we can think about forming it then if we're unable to form a government agency that can handle these kinds of next level, next generation, um, extraterrestrial levels of um, threats and um, villains and things like that so with 2021 Suicide Squad I don't know that it's any better or worse than the last Suicide Squad with Will Smith but for me I actually prefer the first one just because it kind of fit in with the DC film movies I guess. This one I liked a little bit better because it at least presents the starfish as a uh, supernatural threat but that whole part at the end of the film feels more like something that fit, would have fit better in the Watchmen film so if they ever do read, decide to make another Watchmen film like as a sequel or remake the first one then at least it gives me hope that they would be able to fill it in or add the octopus to that film and it would at least be accepted a little bit more now even though I think it would have been accepted then with the level of um, presentation they did but at least if they make the film now in a remake or in a sequel then at least um, we know that they can say true truer to the comics with the whole octopus storyline and the individual characters as well so that's all there is for this particular review so um, I was going to hold off on releasing this review till I could get a better grasp on maybe what I watched but the film 
was okay. Like I said, it's not any better or worse than the last film, but because the last film exists and they're not really negating the last film, but they're not really making this a sequel. And they're like I said initially that there's no real purpose to why this or a purpose I could tell as to why this film was made. I would probably give it a grade of about a C. If the last film was not made, I would have probably given it about a B minus. Um, because, or maybe even a B just because overall the acting was good I liked the interactions and the story and all of that and it generally worked the starfish was probably the only um, thing that was kind of out there because there's they introduce it but because it didn't doesn't really fit in with anything and like I said if it's more in more with the story arc from the Watchmen than it does with the DCU that it's kind of hard to process how it relates to anything especially since it felt like a more silly story arc versus what we've seen so far in the DCU, especially with um, the with uh, General Zod and Doomsday, and then um, the whole thing with the Justice League and all of that stuff, and then even with Steppenwolf and um, I forget if I said Doomsday already, but um, whoever Steppenwolf worked for, I forget his name already, but basically the Starfish thing, I mean, I guess as a Suicide Squad villain, it kind of makes sense, but especially when you have a character like Polka Dot Man and a Weasel, but I don't know, like I said, it doesn't really feel like they've set this up in any particular way for it to make sense or care why I should, or I don't know, just it's the introduction to all of it wasn't really well done or built up to or presented in a way that makes sense. Um, although it might have, might work better after the Batman film is released because at least with Batman and potentially dealing with the Joker, then the rest of the um, villains would make sense. But since we don't have that, we barely have... Um, the Joker in the just in the Zack Snyder Justice League, it's all kind of loosey goosey until I guess we have the Batman film to see how maybe potentially, I guess as the last piece of the puzzle to fit it all together. Um, we also have I guess the Flash, the Flash's film. So I sorry, so I guess I'll say two points where they can redeem themselves, but it all depends now I guess on how those two films go. So that's all there is for this particular review, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, your own thoughts and likes and dislikes of this film, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can comment on this post by supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. And of course the website is headphonesneal.reviews for all episodes, uh, subscription links, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.